All right, it's Barry, and today on Grow It, I'm going to be building and reviewing the cheapest polytunnel that I could find on the internet. So I've been looking for a new polytunnel from the allotment and basically I wanted somewhere to do all my little bits of experiments, my trials, things like that. I've got a big solar panel, batteries and stuff like that. I want to set up a bit of um, a hydroponic setup in there. Um, I also wanted to use this space that I've got on the allotment. I've got a big space in the middle, um, which is pretty much just grass and I'm constantly having to mow it. So I did want to put something there and I really can't be bothered digging out any new beds at the moment because I've already got some more that I've got to do. So that was probably going to continue just being grass for this year at least. So I thought I want to put a polytunnel there and put that space to use. So I'm going to... Um, I mean, I'm not going to be uh, digging any beds out in there. It's just going to be uh, like a weed line of floor. So any tomatoes and cucumbers and stuff like that that I'm going to be growing in there this year are all going to be grow bags, just like I did in the other one and just like I did in the other greenhouse as well. First year, just use grow bags and let everything die off underneath all those weeds and grass and everything. Just get rid of all of that and then start fresh next year. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to use all of that space because um, it's, it's not going to any use. So I thought I might as well grow loads of tomatoes and cucumbers and stuff, give them to the local food banks and just let people um, have some local, locally grown vegetables and stuff because the stuff that they get from uh, the supermarkets is usually past its best before. And when it gets to the supermarket, it's already old anyway. So I thought I might as well take them loads of fresh stuff anyway, use that space for like, what, it's a quid for a pack of seeds. So I could probably grow a load of plants in there. So I thought I'll do that. I'll grow all the hydroponic stuff in there. I'm going to be doing my tomato experiment for this year in there as well. That's coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, it was by um, uh, Out Sunny. It was £145. Um, it was the cheapest place I could find it. That was on Wilco. Um, it's not sponsored by either of those. It's not sponsored by Outsony, certainly. So I'm going to be uh, pretty honest as far as that goes, whether it's any good or not once it's um, once it's all set up. And while we're setting it up as well, that'll probably be uh, I'll probably be passing commentary on bits as that as we go along. So uh, yeah, that's it, really. That's the intro. So uh, let's go and uh, get building. So this is the space where the, the polytunnel is going to be going, and as you can see, it pretty much is the perfect shape already. Um, I've measured it all out and it is the right size, so hopefully it's going to fit in here really nicely. Uh, you can see, see over there to the right is where my raised beds where I've had to dismantle those. Um, and all that's left there is the, basically the insides of that and all the soil. So here it is, and I haven't opened this yet, so I'm hoping everything's going to be inside it. I don't know, um, the taping isn't brilliant on it, I don't know if it was like that to start with, but uh, yeah, everything looks alright actually. I was wondering if it had been opened and sent back on something, but there we go. But yeah, it weighs an absolute ton. It's uh, over 30 kilograms anyway, I think it said 60 or 70 pounds on the box, I don't know what that relates to that over there first on top got our cover don't need that yet and then this little white bag we've got all of the um, nuts bolts all that sort of stuff hardware pack it says on the box and then we've got all of our um, actual frame itself which is going to be the uh, the big part of the job and when I was looking at it I was thinking I don't know how I don't know how strong it's going to be I don't know what gauge it is it's fairly thin but I don't think it's quite as thick as the one that I've got but I don't think it's going to be a problem it looks thick enough anyway, so I don't get a lot of really strong wind here on the allotment. But yeah, I think that's going to be fine. And if not, they can have it back, so I'm not too worried. It's going to have like a 12-month warranty or something from the place that I got it from. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be okay, but we'll see. 
and hopefully it might last as long as the other one. Yeah, so I'm just going to get all that unpacked and start setting it up I suppose. So there we go, that's everything unpacked and everything has a little numbered sticker on it which is quite handy just to um, keep everything separate and know which piece is which because a lot of them do look quite similar. So uh, yeah, let's get this put together. Let's have a look what we get in the little hardware bag. Got a small tub here at the ready just so we can um, stick everything in there. There's nothing worse than losing screws in the grass. Instructions. <laughs> Guy ropes, I don't think I'm going to be using those. Big pack of bolts. My tent pegs. I mean, to be honest, I don't think one of those is going to stop this blowing away. Or four of those, anyway. So a pretty, pretty pointless inclusion. So we've got plenty of Allen key bolts and screws in there, so they're going to be fine. And they've included an Allen key, that's good because I've absolutely forgot to bring one. Don't need this. I'm guessing these are just like little bungs for the ends of the pipes. Yeah, so let's crack on, let's get building. So I think over here is probably the best angle and I'm gonna start off by looking at the instructions, that'd be a good idea. But I'm gonna start off by making the bottom of the frame, obviously, so that I can pretty much work out exactly how much space it's going to take and where it's going to fit and everything so that's pretty much going to be the first thing that I do um, before I do any digging or anything like that so I'm going to put it on time lapse and I'm going to put that together. So we've got one, one of them done and my hands are absolutely killing from using this little spanner thing, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I ended up uh, following the instructions because it basically says to do the hoops and put the top bits on. And then at some point you put the bottom bits on and start building the bottom and you sort of go along and do it that way. So I'm just gonna follow the instructions rather than make a mess of it and have to take it apart again. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on, make another one of these. It's taking absolutely ages because there's like thread lock on the bolts, so you can't screw it on with your fingers to a point and then tighten it up with this. You've got to do it with the whole thing, so not great, but uh, it's my fault for not having a better spanner, I suppose. So uh, yeah, another one of these to come. So there we go. Now I've got two of them done. See what's next on the instructions. Uh, so we've got this bit done. So now we need to put the three sort of top braces on. Um, and then the next one's there. So let's see what the number. <laughs> Everything's just numbered, which I suppose is good in the sense that they only need to print it in one language then. Um, Oh, I see. So this is why the bolts are so long, because... Oh, no. This is why numbers isn't good. I need to put those... Oh, I'm going to have to undo everything again. There we go, so we've got three top bars on now. Notice that these aren't as thick 
as these would have liked these to have been just as thick seen as they are for strengthening it so that's a bit rubbish but we'll see how it goes on it might be that at some point i've got to add some wood to this frame to reinforce it depending on how it does with the wind here uh, it, it's not too bad wind wise but we'll see so <laughs> at least it explains why the screws are so long <laughs> <laughs> at least I don't have to screw them in as far now, so that should speed things up a bit, but oh, I can't believe I didn't even think of doing that. Yeah, so uh, we're getting somewhere anyway, so uh, next I've got to undo the screws on that one and attach it to this one, and also add the next ones along, which are the number five, and then we should be getting somewhere then. So there we are, we're up to this point where uh, probably thought I was going to be before. <laughs> We've got those uh, support bars on ready for each of the things to sort of expand as we put these extra hoops on and go along. So let's have a look at what the next bit is. It's going to be adding the bottom bits, adding the floor bar all the way around like the floor frame and added some of the uh, support bars on as well. And then I think it just basically continues along until the end that way. So we'll see. And uh, hopefully things will go a bit smoother now and we'll get through this a bit quicker. we are at this point we're almost halfway i'm on an hour and a half now since i started so it's not doing too bad it says two hours on the box or the instructions it said somewhere two hours for two people so i mean if i could do it in three that that'd be smashing so yeah so it's looking good up to now i mean we've finally got it standing up and i can get a bit of a picture of how wide it's going to be um which is pretty much where I measured it up to, so it's, yeah, it's not too bad up to now. We've got this first side brace in on um, both sides, which made a big difference, actually. Once I started putting those pieces together, it started to really, uh, really firm up a bit, so everything's looking relatively good so far. So I think it's time for a drink, and then I'll uh, crack on. frame is now completely set up um it's not too bad actually it's wobbly but it's not got the cover on yet and i'm fairly sure the other one was wobbly and it still is to be honest so i'm not too worried about that i'm gonna have to dig a trench all the way around um for the cover to be trenched in it's got maybe a f half a foot extra on the end of the cover um so that you can uh, dig a trench round and then use the soil to weigh it down basically um i've also got some paving stones i've got a flag there that came from here and that i'm going to put that in the middle i'm not going to be using that door at all apart from ventilation but i'm going to put that flag there just as a bit of extra weight on the bottom of the frame at that end and then i've got two flags for each end uh, paving stones so i'm going to put those on the bits that came with my original greenhouse um i've still got loads of them knocking about so uh yeah i'm going to put four of them on and then like I say, I'm going to dig that trench up there for the cover to go in. I'll probably do the sides, actually. Maybe the back um, and the corners, depending. Um, but yeah, that's the next bit. I can't do the time lapse anymore because uh, the battery's gone on the camera. So um, I'll just cut to that trench being done. So there we go. The trench is in. And it is basically as simple as just digging two holes that run along there. They're not especially deep, not especially tidy. It's literally just going to be tucking the cover into there and then putting that back on top of it to weigh it down. So it doesn't have to look amazing. I'm going to have to rebark all of this. Probably do the other side as well just to make it tidy. Um, 
But yeah, we're not far off now. What I'm going to do now is put the floor in. I've got some normal uh, weed membrane. Um, just your normal stuff. I got it from Lidl, actually. It's uh, on special offer, so I got it from the... It's... Um, I think it was two by five metres, so I needed three pieces or uh, two pieces of it with um, the bits cut off to fill this rectangle. So I'll get that stuck in now and then see where we're up to. So the weed membrane is down. I've had to use a couple of different pieces and uh, I've overlapped it quite a bit and took it took it down into the um, trenches as well just to make sure that it's really secure. For the majority of this year at least, maybe into next year, I'm not sure yet, this is going to be basically the floor. So um, I, I, I might put beds in or bark it or something like that at some point, but for the meantime, this is just going to have to do. Um, I did it in that one and that all worked out perfectly fine. It just killed everything underneath because of the temperature and not getting any water as much. Um, it dealt with all of that grass and weeds underneath. So this is at least going to be here for a year. So I thought I might as well trench it in, make sure that it's uh, really stuck there. And then I'm going to duct tape all the pieces together just to make sure nothing's coming up through those gaps. Um, I can't do it today because it's just started raining again. At least it's stopped now, but it started raining again. I had to chuck my coat on. So that's all wet through now. So I can't really, uh, can't really be sticking that together. So all that's left now is to get that cover on and then fill these trenches in. And that's it really. So uh, I'll see if I can set my, I'm using my phone because, uh, <laughs> because the battery ran out on the camera. So. Uh, I'll see if I can get this on the um, on the tripod and hopefully film myself, making a film myself getting this cover on. I've done it on that one. I did it, I put it on. It was inside out. I had to take it off. So I've done it twice technically. So hopefully I should be able to do it. velcro bits that we're talking about on the cover so these are at each end and they're going to just wrap around there i can't do it with one hand obviously but they're just going to wrap around and fix that which in the process tightens the cover up as well it's still still a bit baggy on top but that's just because we've not done the bottoms yet so woo, um these ones are all fixed on yeah, I assumed there was a door at the back, so it's a good job that uh, I didn't want one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't really need a door at this end anyway, because as you've seen, it's all rubbish up this end. But this end of the allotment's where it all floods. Um, this is pretty much the, the line of safety that I've got, so... Oh, it's really starting to rain now. So, basically, going to get those last bits fixed up there, and then I'm going to trench it in. Uh, my top tip is when you're doing this, is to keep the door zipped up while you're doing it because it makes it really difficult and it'll really mess up the lengths and everything so you just want to keep that closed and that'll keep everything nice and secure and to keep the tunnel in the right shape while you're putting everything together so once uh, i've been outside in the rain and um, got all that bottom trenched in we'll have a look at the finished tunnel as far as good timing goes, getting that cover on. <laughs> I don't think I could have done better really because it's absolutely bombing it down now. And uh, yeah, nice and dry. So, um, oh, it's just stopped. <laughs> and there we go. Everything is fully done, fully set up. It took me four hours, which was a bit longer than, uh, a bit longer than I expected. But I suppose if it's going to take two people two hours, then four hours for one person is probably fair enough. Um, I've just got to fix this floor, get all that tape together when it's dried out tomorrow. Um, I'm going to put some more bulge, uh, bulge. I'm going to put some more mulch all across the front. Um, level out that bar at the front because the, the, the level there is a bit weird. So I'm going to need to just dig that out and uh, give that a good mulch in. But apart from that, I'm going to go all the way around with that actually. Um, yeah, I put the, um, 
I've put curbstone there. That's going to weigh down that corn because I can't dig there because there's loads of flags and bricks and all sorts of rubbish under that bit. And this catches up. There we go. That's the trench all filled in. Cover is tucked right under there. So hopefully it's not going to go anywhere. This end's a bit creased. I'm going to have to work that out. I'm not sure what's happened there, but yeah, the cover, it's a bit baggier than the other one. So I don't know whether that's going to catch the wind more or something. Um, it's not the strongest. I mean, it's, it's not too bad, actually. It's probably not too dissimilar to the other one because that wobbles when I push it quite a bit. Uh, but it's still not blown away yet. So, like I said, it would have been uh, nice to have a door at the other end just for ventilation, but I'm not going to use it. And this door thing at the front is pretty big. Those zips, I don't know how long they're going to last. They're generally the first thing to go with one of these tunnels, which is why my other one's held together with zip ties. But you can upgrade those with wood. Steve at Greenside Up did a pretty good video on that. I'll link that in the description just in case you want to give that a go. I'm probably going to do it to the other tunnel at some point because, like I say, that cover's absolutely added. It needs a new cover, really, but I'd like to upgrade the doors. I'll probably do it to this as well at some point. So, but yeah, there we go. So there we go. That is all set up. And uh, yeah, took four hours, including all those rain breaks. So um, I didn't do too bad, really. I was hoping to do it in three, but it did start raining halfway through and... Uh, quite near the end as well so obviously having the cameras and everything I just ran inside the other polytunnel for a bit of uh, a bit of shade from all of that but yeah four hours for one person it says two hours for two people um, and I was using those little gammy tools as well so if I'd have had proper tools um, it probably would have been a bit easier as well but apart from that it looks pretty good it looks fairly sturdy. Like I said, I've trenched everything in. You've seen all how the cover and everything's buried under the floor. I've got paving flags holding it down and everything. So that should hopefully protect it from the bit of wind that I get here. It's normally when um, you get like a proper storm where they give it a name and they, um, they have it all on the news and everything. That's normally when I get any real wind here because it's, it's fairly shaded. I've got trees all the way around, fences. I've got... I've got wind netting and everything so it's generally not that bad here uh, i say that now it's probably going to get some kind of gale force winds and blow it away and it'll end up somewhere miles away i've seen plenty of them in here where people have put polytunnels and greenhouses and things up and they end up about 10 allotments down or hanging off the fences and stuff so we don't want to do that so that's why i've uh, really really made sure to weigh all this down and everything so apart from that it, all that's left to do is see how it goes and we're going to start moving things in. I've got a big raised bed that's coming in here this weekend. Um, that's going to be a really good sponsored video. That that one actually is sponsored, so that's going to be moving in. Um, I'm going to be setting that up. It's Sunday today, so it's bank holiday Monday tomorrow. So I'm going to be doing that tomorrow. Um, all my peppers and things are going in there. I'm going to be putting loads of chilies in there. So that's going to be really nice to have that big bed in there with all those peppers and chilies in the new polytunnel. So that's going to be good. And then I'm going to be doing my tomato trial that I mentioned earlier as well. So that's going to be going in and some uh, hydroponic lettuce things as well. So don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of those videos and check out all of my other gardening videos as well. I've got loads of projects on there, loads of DIY things that you can do. And all of those will help you make the most out of your growing space, no matter how big or small it is. If you've got a balcony, if you've got an allotment, a garden, a community garden, anything, you can put any of these projects even if you've not got any of those at all and you're just growing things on your window ledge, I've got stuff for that as well. So check out all my videos. Let me know in the comments as well what you're going to be growing this year. And I'll see you next time.